The first night, the crescent moon hung over the setting sun like a bowl. When it crested the horizon, I imagined that it broke. And then I did. I was pounded to death by the dust and heat blowing from the western desert. I reached back into my ancient self and found cool and solace in the earth. I retreated into a thousand years ago, finding my way again and again into places of earth. Digging my caches clay with the one-armed man from the Pueblo, he taught me to make again. And with everything I made, I also made a new door to myself from the other side. With each new door was a new thing to discover, a new way of seeing. I was never alone. The moon followed me, bewitching me by showing me all of her forms simultaneously. They taught me about things that should not be possible, places that I could not imagine existed. They taught me about how the soul reaches out to the four directions to try to connect with itself on the other side of the world. She also taught me that the only way that was possible was through water, for water was the only thing that would touch every place in the world. She told me to start collecting water from every sacred place I visited. I did. She taught me the fifth direction, above to Father Sky. I reached and reached and reached for him. But I could only find him in his reflections. He remained silent. The sixth direction below to Mother Earth I remembered going to the sacred shine at Chimayo and not connecting to the dirt in the magic hole, instead collecting my dirt from the path that a million pilgrims have traveled over 200 years. But I kept going back to that hole, and one day it whispered a secret to me. Sibabu is the place of emergence. Take this dirt, add it to that of the pilgrim's path and the micaceous clay from Taos Pueblo. Make your bowl. I took the dirt, but never made my bowl. One night, as I traveled through the galaxy of dream time, the moon goddess came to me and taught me about how it is all connected. That I am the seventh direction. Like all of humanity, I am the heart of Christ. The spark of the universe, alive and experiencing itself. She told me that sometimes we must learn solitude to find connection. That in the silence, I allow my own unfolding. That it is the flower flowering which puts it in right relationship with the world. And that really experiencing source makes you wonder and tremble at the same time. I faded off into the knowing, relearning. I awoke what seemed like months later. Above me floating was the goddess. She told me to light my candles, to collect my goblet and the dirt and the sacred water. She whispered to me, the desert is a place for coming to know yourself. Faith is a way that we can pray for rain. Won't you make your bowl now? Remember the story of the lotus? The story of the lotus, I asked, as in the Buddhist version? She said, There is no place where the perfect lotus flower does not grow in the mud and muck. It is an every one, every time, and everywhere story. She said, The bowl is the sipapu of the traveler's soul. I realized that it was time for me to form something from the nothing. There was no light without dark. No lotus without mud and muck. 
and no bowl without my working the clay. I had to make a space for my own soul to reside. So I made my bowl. When I was done, I marked it and myself with the mark of the goddess who taught me these things. When that was done, there was a cacophony of light around me. I must have fallen asleep. When I woke, I could hear but not see a storm in the distance. In fact, I couldn't see anything. Then a glimmer far away, growing closer and closer still. I woke up in a tunnel. Where was I? Where am I? Finally, a ladder and another. Again and again. I climbed and climbed and climbed until I reached the sky. I climbed out from Masipapu and into the desert where I started to remember. I saw again how very alive everything is. I turned around, picked up my bowl, the one I had made and just stepped out from, and I took it home. <laughs>